Hello friends! We are going to start off this new year with a mixed media self-portrait. Why do artists create self-portraits? It could be to capture who they were in that moment, it could be to express who they are, or a mixture of those two things. So we are going to start off by having a huge piece of paper and we're going to create a background that represents us in some way. Now this could be creating a background of something that you love, which I'm doing because I love houseplants. So I decided to create a background that represents my love for collecting houseplants. Um, I started off with a green background, some crayon, and now I'm going to add a watercolor accent. So you can go ahead and think about what kind of background you want to create that represents you. It could be just bright colors. It could be shapes. It could be something repeated in the background like this sort of leaf pattern that I've created here by drawing different types of leaves. It could be you know, the back of a soccer field, if you love soccer. It could be football field. It could be paint splatters, if you love art, which I was con contemplating doing, but I decided to go with this plant look instead. The options are really endless, so you're gonna have to decide. It could be lines, shapes, color, smiley faces, hearts, stars. If you love outer space, it could be the solar system. But you don't want to make it too crazy. You want to stick to just something a little bit simple. And you're going to be able to use whatever materials you want. If you want a watercolor, go ahead and do it. If you want to do crayon and watercolor like I did, go ahead and do it. This is about you, so you get to decide. What represents you in some way? And like I said, it doesn't have to be anything to do with your interests if you don't want it to be. It could be just a certain color, your favorite colors splashes of color, stripes. This is your choice, this is about you. But I like this simple background because it's unique enough. It represents me, but it's not too crazy where it won't take away from my self-portrait. All right, I think I'm good to go. So now, I'm gonna go through this booklet of sort of these pre-cut face papers. Now there's so many beautiful skin tones in here. So you're gonna go through and match your skin tone, okay? At least, you know, as close as you can. We are also unique, so you might not find your exact skin tone, but you'll do the best you can. Now, I chose this first one for mine. Um, because this one is just a little bit too tan to match my skin tone at this time of the year. So I chose this one here. And now remember your eyes actually are fall in the middle of the face. So 
So you cut that in half, your eyes go about there, and I know it looks silly and it looks like you have a huge forehead, but I promise you it's correct. Your eyes go about here, and then you divide the remaining space in half, the nose goes there, you divide the remaining space in half, the mouth goes there. We'll go over that in more detail. So what I did was I sketched in pencil, and then I added Sharpie. Um, then I created these tracing tools for our shirts. Now you can feel free to create your own, but this is to help you if you want to. So I pre-traced that. I decided to go with a blue shirt right there. And then comes cutting out the hair, which is really, really tricky. Um, so what I did was I used a piece for behind because your hair falls if you have long hair. Mine, mine is quite long. It falls behind me. But I also needed to make up the pieces that fall in front. So I did one for behind the head, one for the front. I've got like bangs going on there. And then I wanted to have some hair falling in the front as well, right? So then I cut out these pieces. See how I did that? It's really tricky. You'll have to play with it until you get the right pieces cut but that's for my hair which I would glue down in that uh, order and then I thought a few buttons for my shirt or I could design my shirt if I wanted to and then I'm gonna go in and start adding color to my eyes and to my lips maybe even a little bit of blush now for the whites of the eyes we're gonna try and do white colored pencil, pressing pretty hard, or if we need to, we can go in with a little brush and acrylic paint. And you're gonna keep adding to your piece until it is complete and you feel it represents you the best that you can. So I'm adding the whites of the eyes with the colored pencil Gotta press pretty hard, but the colored pencils are nice and sharp for detailed work like this. And then I'm gonna add color to the eyes. So mine are kind of like a bluish gray. So I would probably mix like a light blue and a gray or a black, go really light with the black colored pencil, add the color of the eyes, color of the mouth, glue everything down and just see what else I can add that can represent me. These are gonna look awesome and I cannot wait to see yours.